I've always felt like, you know, the one thing that I want these little people to know, right, and to carry with them until they become adults is that God loves them. God loves them, right? He is their friend, but he's always with them, right? This is our next generation of pastors, apostles, teachers, preachers, right? And if we can teach them early in life to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and to pray for people. And I heard the Holy Spirit ever so clearly say like, you know, well, what am I? Like, am, am I not part of this, you know? And after that, I said, I will never say I'm a single mother again. I will never say that, right? I am, God has always partnered with me and my kids. And welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here today. Here with one of my favorite people, Gina Larabina. How are you? I'm well, how are you guys doing? We're doing good, Dan. I'm doing, I'm doing, doing very well. well. I didn't yes. mean to ignore you. No, no. I, yeah. By all means. Yes, yeah. we're glad. We're glad to have you. And I'm, yes. glad, I'm glad you're here today, too. Um, how are you? You're doing I'm well? I'm doing well. Yeah, yeah, doing really good. Yeah. Yep. God's good. Very good. good, yeah. Well, I think one of the things that we had wanted to do for a long time is sit down with some of like the original, the OG members <laughs> of the church, people who have been here been around like for as long as the church has been around and you're one of them so we're glad that we finally got an opportunity to my pleasure to pull you in tell us a little bit about your family to start with um I'm married Uh, (laughs) we've been right we've been married for uh 24 years it'll be 24 years in August but um Lamar and I have known each other I've known Lamar since I was 16 and we have Mm -hmm. four children um Ramses um Avani Brindisi and Sophie nice um all four of them have served in children's ministry here at Heritage of Faith and um, I have a daughter-in-law, Rachel. She's a beautiful young woman. She yeah. married Ramsey's. How many ma- years ago? Um, it'll be, I think, three in August. Yeah. yeah. So they're working on three years. And they live in Ohio. But, so I miss them. But They are the cutest, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I like them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, t- you, like I said at the beginning, you've been here for... Um, About 22 years. Right. Has this um, been 22 years? I think so. I think... Um, I don't, like, have an exact date. Like, I cannot give you, like, the date <laughs> I started... I just, but I'm just as old con- as Brindisi is. I'm consistently <laughs> blown away by that stat at this church. Like mm-hmm. people come here and they just get planted here. Yeah. And I, I've only been here, my wife had a couple of years, but when I hear people that 22 years at a church, that's amazing. Yeah, it it's is. an unbelievable number. It's rich word, right? Yes. Uh, amazing pastors. Yes. Um, like any church, you know, has its ups and downs. And, you know, and I've seen a lot, I've experienced a lot here. Um, but it's home, mm. it's home. The wor- God is still God, you know, even though people are people and things happen, um, God is still God. Mm. Um, so the word is good. Um, it's rich and I'm happy. So, so what was going on 22 years ago that brought you here? Uh, we had m- just moved here from Kansas, uh, in August of 2000, Lamar and I got married and I, um, moved down here because he was already living here working um, for Fort Worth ISD. Oh, okay. And so um, I had, we, I knew I was going to probably go to Eagle Mountain um, just because I was familiar with um, Brother Copeland. And uh, we went, we lived about maybe 45 minutes from Eagle Mountain and we went out there for, for a bit. And um, we're, we ha- the church I went to, we always went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. The kids were always in service, you know. And so um, there was one Wednesday night we were getting ready to go to church and Ram says, I don't want to go. It's long. It's too far. Mm. And so um, I knew at that point I needed to look around for a church or, you know, um, right. probably find something closer to home. Mm-hmm. And um, I was in service when Kenneth Copeland uh, mentioned that Brother Jerry had opened or that Jerry Savelle had opened a church in Crowley. At that time, I wasn't familiar with Texas. So I didn't know where Crowley was. Yep. Um <laughs> and so we church hopped for a giant metropolis right? down here. <laughs> Very familiar with where that exactly. from, where, from where I come from. Yeah, so um, so we church hopped for a little bit. Uh, we were driving down this old Crowley Cleburne Road when to for Rams to go play basketball at Crowley Ninth Grade Center. He was like in little, you know, league basketball, whatever. And I remember telling my husband, I think that's Jerry Savelle's church. There was nothing out here. It was just country road, cows. There was a bunch of cows, you know. And um, just kind of, you know, it in the back of my mind, never really thinking, you know, like maybe I'll go check it out or anything. I'm um, kind of heard of Jerry Seville. I knew of Jerry Seville because we watched um, the Southwest Believers Convention all the time at my church. Um, and so then uh, 
we after church hopping for a little bit and getting the kids feedback um there wasn't a church that they liked and so i said uh, we had moved over to the southwest fort worth area and i said okay let's just go try out jerry sabella's church right and walked in sent the kids to children's church um, at that time it was just ramses and Auverney, and walked in at the time our praise and worship leader was marcus i think maybe um southwest believers convention or Ch- chariots was happening i don't know but church was like packed like there's something was happening sure um that you maybe that was up. right thank <laughs> right. you um that i wasn't aware of um but i remember i just walked in and like immediately just started crying you know and i knew that this was home <laughs> sorry it's okay i knew that this was home mm. after church the kids came running out right can we please come back wednesday night right we can we please come back and that's when i really knew because children's ministry for me was like really important for my kids even if I liked it, if my kids aren't being fed, if my kids don't want to come, oh, yeah, why would I come, sure. right? And so I just knew, and we've been here ever since. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we've been here ever since. And so some people might not see you regularly, and that's because yeah. you are doing yeah. the heavy lifting of the kids' ministry. Like it's not like it's people, it's some people you just never see. Right. You just never see their faces. Yeah. And you're someone that we didn't meet until we went into mid- kids ministry. And you saw. And, and then you saw. <laughs> you were this staple. You were the foundation <laughs> right. rock that yeah. was in that place. Yeah. That was like, explain what led to that. Um, well, I had been here for about uh, about a month. And I think. Um, uh, about a month. Let's about take a, that I don't say. I think I was here about a month. Yeah. I want people yeah. to listen. Yes. It took about a month yeah. to dive in. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> I, way to, way I to take your time. Way to let it breathe. Well, <laughs> let me let me give you my background. Just a sec. But my pastor back home always said, don't be a bench warmer. Right? Right? Don't be a bench warmer. You know, you need to be serving. Get plugged in and serve. Right? And so, um, Pastor Jerry, I think that Sunday <laughs> came to the pulpit with a baby on his back and was saying, you know, children's church needed help. And I had served in children's ministry in my home church back home. And so I said, okay, let me let me go serve. Yeah. Right? Um, it's what I've done i know how to do children's ministry i'm comfortable with it um and so i started um serving in children's ministry um my son um all my kids as soon as they turn 12 and can serve in children's ministry, have always been my helper you know <laughs> yes. um in children's <laughs> church and so i was serving and i you know it's easy to look at children's ministry as maybe child care but it truly is ministry mm-hmm. right and so um not only are you ministering the word of God to children, but you're ministering to families maybe who need to be in service to sit, right? Need some mm-hmm. healing or, you know, just sometimes it's great just to go sit on Wednesday nights after a long day at work. I like to do that. I like to just come Wednesday nights and just sit, you know, and just allow the the praise and worship and just the presence of God, you know, just to kind of just refresh you, you know, and just kind of, you know, be refreshed. And so, Serving in children's ministry is something I've always loved doing. Um, we've, like, um, Tanya was pastoring our children's ministry for a bit. And so there's been, I've been here through a lot of children's church. A lot of transitions. Yeah, a yeah. lot of transitions. Um, but I love it. What, it's great. what you always brought was that stability, that person that has been here who understands the ins and outs of children's ministry because it's more than snacks. Yes, it is. It's more than the high <laughs> energy worship. There's a lot more to oh, it, right, yeah. and there's a lot more to pouring into those kids. Yeah. So, so even if somebody came in to serve, I remember, you know, people would serve for different reasons, and yeah. sometimes they come in and they do have a, a child care mentality, yes. kind of attached to it. And all I'd have to do is pair them with you, yeah, thank you. And mm-hmm. then I would know that they would they would hear the heart of our church as, yeah. well as it relates to student ministries, yes. and we're pouring into these kids. We we get you know this hour and a half time to make a mark yes. on them for eternity. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Will you share a little bit about what your heart is for sewing into these kids? Yeah, so I've always felt like, you know, the one thing that I want these little people to know, right, and to carry with them until they become adults is that God loves them. God loves them, right? And he is their friend, but he's always with them. No matter when things get rough or something happens, God is always with you and he loves you. And so I feel like children's ministry is is so easy. It's just, it's easy to share the love of God with children because they just receive it. 
They receive it so naturally and so willingly. Um, you can go in there looking a mess, and they don't care. They're just gonna they they <laughs> you know they they feel you know your heart for them, right? And so and they just receive the word so, and they believe it. Sometimes you know with adults, our experiences in life and right. um, it can sometimes we don't like trust the word right the way a child does mm -hmm. yes. um, and they just trust the word right and so I don't know I just always love children's ministry I love children mm -hmm. and just as someone who's like it's I've been privileged enough my wife and I to be in that back room be in the children's right. ministry is a, such an unbelievable opportunity because these kids you don't know until you've been back there, but they are getting the same quality yes, where the parents right. are getting. It's really shocking to see because you don't see it all the time. Like yeah. a lot of times most, and this is not a shots fired statement, sure. but some churches treat it just like that yeah. daycare. Mm -hmm. It's a kid care moment. It's just, we're going to feed and hold your kids and yeah. not let them kill themselves for the next yeah. 90 minutes. Yeah. And then you come back and get them. Mm -hmm. We're here. It's completely different. And like you've been here for so long doing it is how did that culture get created? Well, I think it's always been, right? When I first started ministering here um, in children's ministry, we were um, royal heirs, right? Um, airborne, yeah, um, air force, <laughs> right? A so air. a lot of air, yeah. right? A lot of air. So there, <laughs> there is, yes. exactly, right? Yeah. There, There is a heritage, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so as a teacher of like the twos and threes or the, you know, two, three through five class, I felt like it was my responsibility to give them the foundation to be ready for your class, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I think it's always been here, right? This is our next generation mm -hmm. of pastors, apostles, teachers, preachers, right? But not only that, but they're going to go to school, maybe public school. Um, they're going to go to the supermarket with their parents, right? And so they will always have the opportunity to minister some, to somebody. Mm -hmm. And if we can teach them early in life to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and to pray for people. Yes. I mean, it's a win-win. I mean, that's making winners. Yeah, that's that right. Really it's a win-win. That really yeah. is. Uh, what I love about you is that it didn't really matter to you, their age. You just are going to pour into them. Um, is yeah. that true, would you say, in your professional career also? Yeah. Uh, Tell us what you do. I'm a lactation consultant at the um, John Peter Smith <laughs> JPS. Uh, yeah, cause I, I had to take a double take <laughs> okay. and we are doing You're like, like what all. Did, what yeah. do we do? <laughs> is that typo or does that really say what it's I think it says? Yes, it, yes, lactation it is. consultant. Mm -hmm. Could you, yeah. for all of us that have no that idea. Have no <laughs> ideas. Um, I help moms um, breastfeed their babies. <laughs> there we go. So right. <laughs> plain and simple, right? Good. And so um, I've counted a really true ministry um, to be able to do that because at a, the, one of the most vulnerable times in a woman's life, right? Um, having a baby, feeding this baby, bringing this baby into the world, becoming a mother maybe for the first time. Um, what a great time to minister to her and encourage her and strengthen her, right? That she's made and designed to be this baby's mother and to nourish her baby, right? The, naturally the way God designed it, right? right? If that's her choice and her desire to. And so um, it really is a ministry for me. Um, where I work, John Peter Smith Hospital, it's our county hospital. So I also feel like um, I am the hands and feet of Jesus at, in my um, profession and where I work because um, we do serve some of the most vulnerable communities in Tarrant County. Um, people, like Tanya said earlier, maybe without a lot of resources. And so it is a ministry just to encourage, right, just to love on people um, without – saying Jesus, right, without using, mm -hmm. you know, the gospel or, you know, Christianese, right, but just to really love people where they're at in this time in their life. It really is an honor. I love, I well, love it. I, I appreciate that about you a lot. And, you know, that type of, that community that you serve, a lot of times you say, well, they, they have a lack of resources, but most of the time in those in those communities, they they lack the resource of encouragement, yes, and uh, acceptance and yes. love and appreciation and somebody to tell them you can do this, like you are capable, yeah. like you have everything you need to supply for your baby one way or the yeah. other. Like God's gonna make sure that yeah. you're doing it, and you're doing it through very much so through through your heart of serving people, no matter who they are. Yeah. So did I, do. I love it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I had a question in my yeah, head and it just sorry. went right out my head. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. This we is why we, this of, is uh, why of Gina. Well, do you see them before or only after 
They've had the baby. Um, a little bit of both. Um, JPS has in their women's, um, uh, I guess their women's um, department or their OBGYNs, they have what they call centering, which is group care. Um, during prenatal, their prenatal care is done in a group. And so we go down for a centering class and do some prenatal breastfeeding education. Okay. Um, sometimes I will work on the postpartum floor if they need help down there. I'll go down there. But basically, I work outpatient lactation Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. So I see them um, after they deliver their babies. Coming in with their place. babies. Yeah. What, do you, awesome. what do you see as the greatest need that a mother needs to hear in those moments? That she's, she's capable. That she is capable. Right? That she... I always... I always tell my moms when they're with me, you are your baby's expert. Mm -hmm. Even though maybe you're holding your baby for the first time, you are your baby's expert, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, I just have, I'm a person with information here to help you, but you are your baby's expert. And so I think they need to trust themselves um, that they're capable of caring for their baby um, and feeding their baby however they choose to. That's good. Yeah, thank you. When, when did you in your life, growing up with four kids, learning how to be a mother, was that something that came natural to you or? <laughs> no, not, not necessarily. I think if I you ask my natural. kids, yeah, yeah, I would think if you ask my kids, <laughs> they'll have some great stories. Um, but I had um, <laughs> Ramses when I was 17 or 18. I had wow. just turned 18. And um, really by the grace of God, right? Really by the grace of God, um, I raised a, a, a pretty good, all the glory of God, I raised a, a pretty decent kid. And um, so I had Ramses say, um, 18, Auverney at um, 22. And at the time, Lamar and I weren't married. Um, I was still living in Kansas. And so um, my mom is an, an amazing mother and very loving, um, very kind. And so I, I kind of just did what my mom did, um, you know, in raising them. But I knew I wanted to ground them in the word of God, right? I knew that for me, that was the most important thing is that they had the word, they had a strong foundation in the word of God, no matter where they went in life no matter, you know, how things came for us. Um, one time I remember uh, I was complaining about being a single parent, um, I think to somebody or something, and I heard the Holy Spirit ever so clearly say, like, you know, well, what am I? Like, am, am I not part of this, you know? And after that I said, I will never say I'm a single mother again. Mm -hmm. I will never say that, right? I am. God has always partnered with me in raising my kids. Mm -hmm. and, so. and I guess... How, do you get a chance to encourage those single mothers that have that? I mean, because my my wife was a, a single mother at eighteen as well. Yeah. A very similar story, and it's one of those things where there's it's it's a very difficult situation to mm -hmm. be in with guilt, shame, the whole yep. the whole kit and caboodle that comes with that situation. Yeah. Um, and you've got unique experience with that. Yeah, I think so. I like most of. Um, I so I've transitioned from children's ministry, and I kind of fill in when they need me. Yeah. We um, I can't you. thank you. Yes, yeah. I know. But <laughs> I can't I think I can let go completely, but um I've been um starting working with Embrace Grace. Right. The mm. women's, right. our ministry yeah. for oh, Embrace I mean, Grace, yes. right? And that has really been heavy on my heart to um just explain what that is real fast. Yeah. So yeah. Embrace know what that is. Yeah. So Embrace Grace is a ministry for um women who find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy. Mm. Um just to come alongside them to minister, you know, to them through through this time. Um encouraging them or really praying for them um, to choose life, mm -hmm. right? To choose life for their babies. And so that really touched my heart. Um, being a mom of two at a young age, um, there was conversation in my family about um, aborting my baby, right? And um, just, you know, the guilt, the shame, you know, you're young, all that. And I just knew that I couldn't, you know, and so um, Embrace Grace really has um, touched my heart, and I knew that this is probably where I want to minister to women. Mm -hmm. um, I can understand their situation and where they're mm -hmm. coming from and where they're at, but, um, you know, things change, right? Things can change tomorrow. There is hope, yeah. right? The hope of glory, Christ in us, right? Things can change, and it won't always be hard. Yes, it's a time and a period and a season where it's hard, where you're wondering, you know, you know, how am I going to buy diapers, you know, or how am I going to, you know, do this? But God is faithful. Mm. You know, God has always been faithful. I can testify God has been faithful to Gina and her family. Mm. Oh, that's evident for sure. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we really faithful. appreciate the God on the inside of you. Thank you. That has been um, a gift to our body. It's been a gift to 
to our kids personally. I was gonna say yeah. Uh, yeah, she's right. She's helped me raise all the babies. No, she's so, been. I know. It's yeah. just, uh, I she's love, a fixture in she, the, in the, love my in the kids ministry. She it's she like, helped me amazing. welcome Lucas, our thirteen year old, mm-hmm. into the kids ministry, like mm-hmm. into the into the church yeah. body. So Gina's been a part of my story for a long time, and I appreciate the heart that you have, you. which kind of leads us to this next question, which is what this house is about, what you've heard for 22 years, which is making winners yes. in life. That's what Dr. Seville preached about. That's what Pastor Justin preaches about. Um, and you exemplify that. Thank you. Um, would you take a minute to tell us what that statement, making winners in life, really means to you? To me, it means just that, depositing the word of God, right, mm-hmm. into your heart, into the heart of children, um, into the heart of the congregation, that no matter what comes your way, right, no matter where you're at, you know, um, the word of God is going to, it's going to flourish. It's going to grow. The word of God, right, is going to produce the victory, mm-hmm. right? And so to me, I think you're a winner in life if you stay steadfast to the word. Mm-hmm. You know, I try to teach my kids, it doesn't matter what you do in life. You can have a degree. You can be a doctor. You can be a lawyer. You can be a mechanic can be a mcdonald's manager right you no matter right. what you do yeah if you have the word of god you will always be prosperous you will all god will always supply and meet your needs that's amazing i love these answers that's a, thanks I, I, it's one of the best parts is i every time i just wait i can't wait to hear what someone thinks about that because it always makes me reevaluate what i think about right. it and so right. it's so great this has been amazing and it means it means a lot now even talking about making winners in life yeah. now yes. just for some context for our audience uh um, we got to see uh, our founding pastor dr jerry Seville, go to heaven yeah. recently mm-hmm. so when this comes out it'll have been have been about a, a month or so but um but the legacy he leaves yes. for us is is powerful and and you really show yes, that in your life you. i think i'm so appreciative of this ministry um and the word that's been sown it's just changed our you know my family's life right um the entire you know Savelle family they the ministry um but really who they are and how they lived um has shaped my family mm-hmm. and our faith not just you know like shaped my family but our faith and um i'm very i'm grateful it's been an honor to serve this ministry for 22 years of my life and it's an honor to continue serving this ministry. Um, I don't have words yeah. of appreciation to explain to Pastor Jerry and his family that our family truly loves him, just as Pastor Justin said, and beautiful will be the feet of really the Savelles in the Lewis household. Thank you for being awesome. Yeah. Thank you for being real. Thanks I mean, for it's, asking me. it's super, <laughs> it's super tender right now to all of our hearts. Yes. And, and, and recognizing that um, to be, you know, absent from the body is to be present with yes. the Lord. So we have hope. Yes. And Amen. we know the promises of God. Yes. Um, but it is precious what he sowed into our lives. Yes. And we want to take it as such. So I appreciate you being vulnerable and, and being even willing to come on at this in the timing that this is, yeah, is being absolutely. filmed. So we appreciate that about you. Thank you. Well, I, um, one thing I've learned from Pastor Jerry, too, is um, you just keep moving, yeah, <laughs> right? It's um, true. Just don't skip a beat. Things, you know, ministry needs to be done, and people are needing us and needing the Word of God. This is, I mean, again, this is a wonderful, I, I love these conversations. They're so fun. I I mean, this whole moment, not to, you know, sweep past with, the, like, what season we're in right mm-hmm. now with, the, with, right. with Dr. Savelle, but... Again, people like you being here like are so a reason why this ministry is being as successful as it is and for as long as it's been. And so your presence here is just truly appreciated. So thank, thank you. you so much for, for being here. Thank for you for coming me. and speaking with us. It's been yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Right? It's been awesome. Oh, yeah. yes, thank I had you. a great time. Yeah. Thank you. We've got a great crew. <laughs> ah, they, <laughs> yes, trust you. The talent's behind the camera. Okay? Yes, <laughs> it's yes. just it's the truth. Yeah, I'm going to be the first to say that right now. Um, but we want to thank you all for, for joining us today. Thank you for uh, being a part of this Winning Conversations. We want to invite you. We're going to put in the show notes, the Embrace Grace. If there's something that yes. Gina spoke about that touches your heart for these, these daughters of Christ that are choosing to have life, Lord, 
we want you guys to have an opportunity to sew into that, pour into that. So we're going to give you information about Embrace Grace. Also, please stay tuned for next week, June. The next episode will be the first Friday, first Friday of June. So you'll have our leadership here talking to you directly, which I am. It's awesome. going to be an exciting message, and we really would love for you to hear that. So we hope you join us next time we're here. Okay, bye.